What's happening everyone? My name is Alex and welcome back. Well, today's video is a bit different. I don't typically make videos for motorized vehicle, but here we are. So this right here, it's called the, the Honda PCX125. This is a 2022 model. Now, this model is very similar, probably identical with the 2023 model. So I think this video will apply for both um, years for this um, particular scooter. I've um, had this particular one since March 2022 and we currently have about 3,700 kilometers on it. So I did get to ride it in a lot of um, situations, in a lot of conditions, so I feel that I have a good understanding of this particular vehicle and I can tell you my thoughts um, about it and my experience um, with it over this time. So the PCX125 is one of the most popular um, scooters sold by Honda and that makes sense because of its price because this is a fairly affordable um, scooter. You can get this um, out on the road for about 3500 euros so it makes it a pretty affordable vehicle for a day-to-day -day vehicle because you can definitely use this as a day-to-day -day vehicle. Aside from that, most people can drive this with their current driver's license. So depending on the country where you're located and on the driver's license that you've had and the, the, how long you've had that driver's license for, you could drive this with a car's driver's license. So that's why it is so popular because it does offer really good value for what it is. And it can be driven by a variety of people without needing a specialized motorcycle license. To go over the scooter specs quickly, so we have an 125cc engine that makes some 12.5 horsepower. And I know 12.5 horsepower doesn't seem like a lot. Well, it is not a lot, but the scooter only weights 130 kilos, so it is not a heavy vehicle. Now, for in-town riding, that 12.5 horsepower does really, really well. There isn't really no situation where you feel like you don't have enough um, power. So it is quick enough um, so you can stay in traffic. It is actually faster um, than most of the traffic most of the time, I'm going to say. But if you do take this um, on the highway, for example, for longer um, rides, then it does feel underpowered, mostly if you're riding with a passenger. Personally, I've been riding this scooter with a passenger most of the time. And in some situations, if you're riding uphill, for example, you feel that the scooter doesn't have enough power. Um, you kind of drop to like 60 kilometers an hour on uh, steeper roads, I'm going to say. So this scooter is great for in-town riding. It is okay for longer distances but um, I wouldn't take this on the highway. If you ride just by yourself you can reach about 100 kilometers an hour. I think I've seen it the faster going 102 kilometers an hour on the highway but this was not designed for highway riding so I wouldn't buy a scooter like this um, to go long distances. I would basically buy it for in-town riding and small trips um, during the weekend. What's really impressive about this vehicle though is the fuel consumption. So we have the gas tank around here and the scooter can take 8.1 liters of gas, so not that much. But the fuel consumption um, averages between 1.8 liters for 100 kilometers and 2.1 liters for 100 kilometers and that's most mostly with a passenger. Now, personally, I don't drive fast or anything. I usually do the speed limit and um, I don't accelerate fast. So I may have a lower average than normal, but it is impressive how good the fuel consumption on this vehicle is. It's, this is the, the vehicle that had the best fuel consumption from all the vehicles that I've had up until now. Moving to the front of the scooter for a bit. So on the front here, um, we have a 14 inch wheel and on the back, we have a 13 inch wheel. This is pretty normal for um, scooters, I'm gonna say. Now on the front here, we have one disc brake. On the back, unfortunately, we do not have a disc brake. On the back, we have a drum brake. Now, if you're riding by yourself, the braking power is pretty good in most situations, even if you're driving fairly, fairly fast. But I did notice that whenever I ride with a passenger, and we're doing about 70, 80 kilometers an hour, when you brake, you do feel like you don't have enough braking power on the back. Now, again, you're not going to have to emergency brake every single day, but I wish we would have had a disc brake on the back because the back with the drum brake just doesn't, doesn't give you that, um, that feeling of safety whenever you're braking from higher speeds. 
For lower speeds, no problem whatsoever, but yes, I definitely wish um, the scooter would have had um, a disc brake on the back as well. The factory tires that we get on this scooter on the front and of course on the back are pretty good in my opinion. I never felt um, the need for stickier tires, I'm gonna say. So the factory tires that um, we get are quite good. The only time that I felt um, my front tire skid was um, one day when I was riding over one of those um, white markings on the road. So I was braking and I did feel the ABS um, kicking in um, for that front um, tire. So yes, we do have ABS and of course having ABS on a motorcycle is definitely important. There is also traction control. So if you're riding over um, I don't know, wet surfaces, I'm gonna say, sometimes you could get that um, rear wheel um, spinning a bit um, too much by mistake. But since we have traction control on this particular vehicle, that hasn't happened at all. So the traction control combined with the ABS um, are definitely great safety features for this vehicle. The PCX has LED lights on the front and on the back. The back is nice and bright and whenever you are braking, that um, rear brake light also gets quite bright so you can easily see it um, from a distance. Now, whenever you are riding during the day, the front headlight is also quite bright so you can see the scooter um, coming from um, quite a distance as well. But um, the one time or the two times that I um, drove this at night, I have to say that the front lights don't, um, don't really light up the path um, ahead of you that well. So personally, because of that, I um, try not to ride this at night because the headlights just don't do that great um, at night, at least in my opinion and for my eyes. But um, yeah, great during the day, not so great um, during the night, I'm gonna say. And since we are on the front here, um, here we have the windshield. Now, the windshield is mostly here, so the scooter looks good because whenever you are riding, it doesn't actually protect you from, uh, from the wind. I know there are some other windshields out there that um, are taller. So if you do have to do some more highway um, driving, I'm gonna say, you're probably better off to buy um, a taller windshield because um, this one doesn't really do anything. It's just here, so it looks good. Moving on to the mirrors. Well, the mirrors are um, quite um, decent, I'm gonna say. Even though when I'm sitting on the scooter, I um, do see my shoulders here, but you do have like half a mirror, so you can still see behind you. So overall, I'm happy with the, the mirrors. The handlebar is nice and wide, and um, it is high enough that it gives you a good uh, standing position when you're riding on the scooter, I'm gonna say. So I'm happy with this um, setup right here, even though I'm not a big fan of all the cables that we have um, around here. I wish Honda would have done something to kind of hide um, these cables here, but um, it is um, what it is. I've also noticed over the past month and a half, I'm gonna say that um, I'm getting a bit of a vibration somewhere around here um, in the dashboard at certain speeds. I wasn't able to, to figure out where it's coming from, but yeah, there is a bit of a vibration that I haven't had um, when I first um, got the scooter. And since we're talking about uh, the dashboard here, um, so we have a little screen in the center here. This is an LCD. It is an inverted LCD, so you can see it even um, in direct sunlight, but there isn't that much information that um, you're seeing there. You basically see your speed, you see how much um, gas you have, um, you see the time and um, the odometer. So not that much information on that LCD. However, you can see it really well, even in um, direct sunlight. The seat isn't that tall either. Personally, I am um, 183 and as you can see for yourself, I can definitely touch the ground um, without any issues. And since the scooter is not that heavy, only 130 kilos, you can easily control it. So I feel that this will be the case for most um, riders. So it is very comfortable to, to hold, to control whenever you are stopped. The riding position is also quite um, comfortable. So you are nice and straight um, whenever you are riding your feet have plenty of space here. Now the foot holder, I'm not sure how to call uh, this part here. So you could also keep your feet kind of like this, but I don't find this comfortable at all. Most of the time I ride just like this and I do feel quite um, comfortable and confident whenever I am um, riding on the road. 
The passenger foot pegs are also quite wide. And as I said, um, we typically ride this um, together. So Laura, that's filming me and myself. And um, I feel that the foot pegs here are um, quite um, wide as well. And I like the way uh, they look when closed. It doesn't look like um, you have um, rear foot pegs, I'm gonna say. And that brings us to the seat. So let me just uh, put this up. So the seat here, is comfortable for up to 40 minutes, maybe 50 minutes of riding. After that, you do start to get a bit um, tired, at least for my body, I do get a bit tired. And after about 45, 50 minutes, I do need to take um, a break. So maybe a bit more padding would have been nice, but since this scooter is mostly designed for urban riding, so in town riding, most rides shouldn't be that long. So for longer trips, yes, you do get a bit um, tired, but overall it is a pretty big seat and comfortable for shorter rides. One of the advantages of having a scooter, of course, is having that extra space under um, the seat here. So to open the seat, we have um, a couple of buttons on the side here. The scooter also has a keyless entry, I'm gonna say, well, there is no entry, but um, you basically don't have to plug in a key anywhere, the key can sit in your pocket and um, you can turn it on and off um, that way. So you open the seat by pressing this um, button here and under the seat, of course, we do have plenty of space. You can easily fit a half um, helmet in here. I was um, able to fit a full helmet, but only one type of helmet. So you're not gonna be able to fit all um, full helmets. However, even if the helmet is a bit bigger, you could put a bit of pressure on the seat and it will still close. But probably ideal if you have like a smaller um, helmet and you're not gonna be able to fit the second um, helmet. However, you do get some space for other um, stuff. Now, one thing that I wish um, this would have had was a light because if you're in a parking garage, you open this, you can't exactly see anything um, in here. So a light would have definitely been um, helpful. Now, as you can see here, I have the top box right here. This is the 35 liter um, Honda top box. And I find that adding a top box to the scooter changed the way that we use um, the scooter because this way you can fit um, the second helmet in here. So I have my second helmet in here but you can also use this to get groceries and stuff. So adding a top box on it was definitely the best thing that um, I've done for um, this. And this particular top box wasn't that expensive either. I believe it was around 220 euros or something like that. So it definitely adds um, a lot of functionality, let's say, or convenience to, to the scooter basically. One other thing I've noticed when this is mostly when you're riding with a passenger, this doesn't exactly happen if you're riding alone. So on the back here, we have the two shocks, obviously. And um, I did notice that when you have a passenger and you're riding um, on more uneven surfaces, I'm gonna say, the back of the scooter is quite bouncy. So I typically feel the scooter doing, um, doing this multiple times. This doesn't happen when you're riding by yourself but it definitely happens um, when you're riding with a passenger. And in those situations, well, the scooter becomes a bit um, wobbly, I'm gonna say. So again, this is probably designed for one person, not necessarily for two people. The exhaust is on the right-hand side um, here, um, and um, I'm happy that the scooter doesn't make that much noise. Um, actually, let me show you how that works. So I'll get on the scooter, and um, we'll turn this on. So definitely not a loud uh, vehicle. For me, that's great. I hate um, loud vehicles. So nice and comfortable when you go for longer rides, it's not uh, gonna be loud enough to make you get a headache. So pretty good sound for um, a scooter, I'm gonna say. Aside from those things that I mentioned, so the windshield here that could have been a bit higher, the shocks that don't work the best when you have a passenger on. I don't really have anything bad to say about this scooter. It has plenty of power for in-town riding. It is actually quite a joy to ride this scooter, mostly in the summer, not to mention easy parking anywhere. 
For maintenance, I went to my first um, oil change. I believe that was about 75 euros or something like that. Of course, that could be different depending um, on the dealership um, where you go. But um, other than that, no maintenance that I had um, to do. Nothing broke down and the scooter is basically like new. Except for that vibration that I got somewhere um, around the, the dashboard um, there. We also have this little, let's call it glove box. We have a USB-C port in there, a port that I never actually got uh, to use, but uh, it's, um, it's there if you need it. And either than that, I am pretty happy with this um, scooter. I never actually thought that I would enjoy um, such an underpowered uh, vehicle, because, well, 12.5 horsepower is definitely not that much. So if you're looking for a vehicle for daily commuting, for example, to go to work um, and stuff, this is definitely a great um, vehicle. It looks really good in my opinion, not in Laura's opinion, she doesn't um, like the way the scooter looks. But for me, it kind of looks like a small motorcycle. It is actually one of the best looking scooters on the market, at least in my opinion. And for this, um, this kind of um, engine, so 125cc. Um, so overall, yes, I am super happy with uh, this vehicle, even though I will be trading it in in a couple of days, and that's why we're filming the video today. All right, guys, um, if you do have any questions about this, um, if you're considering buying a scooter, you have any questions, definitely leave a comment, and um, I'll do my best to answer whatever questions um, you may have. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.